May 5th, 1988. This way. Over here. <laughs> this way, I'm sorry. Thank there. you. Thank you. Now, now we're going to have everybody behind the president. That's Mayor Barbie. Mayor Mayor, your supporter, Mr. President. That's Coach Evelyn Blaylock. She's the brain. All the Thank you. And then begins the players. Well, hello there. Hello. Sam Hudson. Sam Wells. College yearbook, a copy of the Ranger. Hope that you'll enjoy it. I will. The second is a copy of History of <coughs> College. 
Uh, this was written by two of our former faculty members. They announced the completion of this publication and their retirement at the same time. Hopefully that wasn't indicative of what's going to happen. So, and we do appreciate our opportunity to be here very much. Well, listen, I'm very pleased to see you all. I congratulate you. Mayor has a presentation. Mr. President, on behalf of the city of Kilgore and the author of this book, The Glory Days, uh, depicting the oil money in East Texas, I want to present that to you. And then by the same author, Mr. Jack Elder Gory Days, a Texas ghost tale that I'd like to present to you, but maybe you can have at your range. And one last thing, this is a replica, as you know, of a pumping jack yes. uh, in East Texas oil field. This, rep, this pumping jack is actually should be about 20 feet long and about 16 feet high, but because of the economic conditions in Texas now, this is about what they have shrunk. <laughs> So it is my privilege to present this to you and also a pen for you to wear. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, before I go vote to strengthen the defense of this country, I want to give you a haul of good luck penny that I've used in all my campaigns since 1940. Well, God bless you. Thank you. Take that and then work on garbage off with it. You won't I have to go vote. Right. <laughs> Good well, thanks. Last but not least, we did not forget your wife, Mrs. Reagan, and this will match yours. Well, thank you. Thank you. I have a vote, Mr. Brady. Thank you, Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Congressman Paul. Thank you very much. Good to see you all. Have you here? But I didn't know you were going to come laden with gifts. <laughs> it is our privilege. So we just thank you for taking a good time to see us, sir. Well, some days here are more fun than others. <laughs> I understand that. Yes. Thanks again. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very appreciative of what you've done to so take the time to see us. Mr. Alfred of Boeing Company. Yeah, hello. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. See you. Yes. And Mr. Curtis. Also. Hello. How do you do, Mr. President? Good to see you. Mr. Curtis is in charge of the construction of your new plane, sir. Well, I was treated to a, a set of pictures of it on the uh, old plane coming back from Chicago the other day. Oh, we're it's just magnificent. We're honored that you uh, fly a Boeing airplane, and we're looking forward to delivering this airplane. Use by you. I and understand. Our that people you. are proud to, to work on this airplane, of course, to uh, say that they have a part of something that uh, is so uh, historical. Well, I understand it's going to get here a little while before we leave, so that <laughs> we're, we'll we're, we're working hard to make it right. Oh, my golly. It's just magnificent. But, uh, we uh, just wanted you to know that we're honored that you uh, saw us, and we want to make well, this presentation. Well, I thank you very much. I'm proud to have this. Yeah, we're pleased that you uh, serve this country. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, we thought maybe you'd like one of these hats a lot of our people that are working out on the airplane wire. Hey, well, Air Force One. I think Jim adjusted it, but, uh, he, but he guessed wrong. I don't always like it. See, I'm, I have a small head. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I think we ought to get a, a formal post photo with the yes. three of you. We didn't get that. Yes.
it doesn't have quite the the height the, the hump thing yeah. up there. Boy, it's a streamlined, beautiful thing. That photograph that they showed them with nothing in it, but taken from back here in the tail, looking up. It was looking like a subway. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm Sybil Stockdale. I'm glad to see you again. We were that we were last with you when you and Mrs. Reagan had us for dinner at when Jim came home from prison. Yep, in Sacramento. Oh. Hello. Uh -huh. That's right. nice to see you. And now I know what you've been doing about the White House Fellows. Well, I'm longer than anyone else has ever done it. Well, it's been a pleasure. What is fun, and I've pumped about 100 into the system under your auspices, uh, representing <laughs> you. Yes. Well, let's get it. Okay. Glasses <laughs> off. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I thought I, I was going to tell you that I was Sophia Loren. I, I know that they sent you in the briefing part about the part in our book where you called me up when you were governor and Jim had been in prison. And I thought, good, you said this is Ronald Reagan speaking. And you call her in Coronado on that. Right. And it was very early on in the POW days. And um, I thought, goodness, what man in my life do I know with such a wonderful voice? <laughs> and um, you said, this is Ronald Reagan speaking. And I was tempted to say, I thought it was somebody fooling. I was tempted to say, well, this is Sophia Loren. What are you <laughs> I got some answers like that. <laughs> I would imagine yes. so. Yes. I would imagine so. Well, you're doing a wonderful job about the, the POWMIA wow. thing. We don't think there's. We don't happen to believe there's anybody there still alive. I'm finding it hard to. to and we'd be. And any time, any time you want any support in that direction. Yeah, it's hard for us. We, we we try. To, I know to track down everything yeah. that comes in, and they say it, and and that sometimes they've claimed, uh, you know, seeing someone like on a street in the in the city. Yeah. Well, then I wondered if you remember toward the end of the war there. Uh, you had to get army permission to, to marry a Vietnamese. Yeah. And there there was a percentage of fellows that went AWOL. Turncoat. Well, yeah, and they, right. there were people right. that we knew. That and I wonder if there are some still there. Oh, oh, right. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, that, yeah. and that's what those, those are the people that they see undoubtedly and yeah. that they give reports when I, uh, when I came back, uh, I was I went into uh, Elliot Richardson's office with some of my peers, the whole bunch of Jerry Denton was there and everybody else. And I was the spokesman and he said, did you leave anybody there? And I said, well, no, we're, we're, because we compiled a list of everybody we'd ever seen, whispered to, tapped to, and either they'd come back in a box or they'd come out with us. And he said, what about the enclave, the secret enclave? And I said, in the presence of all these people, I've spent eight years trying to psych them out, and I've got a certain credibility in, in knowing what they can do and what they can't do, and they're just not capable of that. It wasn't that they're nice, or, or, or that they were too dumb to, they just don't think that far ahead. So I was, I was you know, for the first two years, I, I wouldn't have even brought up the subject. Laos is different and so forth and so on, but uh, I, have, I have never believed it. You should have a picture with the president uh, by, as you say, okay. as, say goodbye Take to the White I'll House fellows. <laughs> Okay. And they are just souvenirs of your visit at the Oval Office. That's lovely. That's Thank you very, very much. Give our best to Mrs. Reagan. It's very you. nice of you to well, see us. We appreciate it. You. you look wonderful. You're doing a great job. See you in California. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.